Hey everybody, it's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Thursday night, the 14th of July. These are the charts of the day. Well, it was an interesting day. Uh, markets were up sharply, bounced, came down in the uh, afternoon to do some testing, did not break, and then came on strong, but managed to back off in the last half hour, as we've seen lately, as some cautious profit taking came setting in due to over, overbought conditions. But the market keeps climbing. Individually, a lot of stocks did well today, and let's show you a few of the stocks that we um, are either swinging or day trading, etc. Um, Acacia, which has just been phenomenal since just after the IPO when it hit a bottom down around 27, then ran up to 45 and pulled back into the um, Brexit low around the 33 uh, area, has, has been smoking it 15 points up in the last couple of weeks. Today, up another 281 or 5.7% on a million one. Um, this looks like a stock that isn't done yet. And uh, although we may have yesterday's low as a potential stopping point. We don't want it under 47. Uh, I think the stock could hit the mid-50s as early as tomorrow, maybe 57. Let's keep an eye on this one. Looking at it on a 15-minute basis, you see the chart pattern and why I'm so high on the potentiality of making it up to the mid-50s, especially with the move through the um, double top late in the session. AXDX, one of our swing trades, which we saw popped here and then came down into the Brexit low, has gone up every day since then. <clears throat> That's two weeks up, six, 12 trading days or something like that. Let's see. 12 trading days in a row. Amazing. So I wouldn't be an advocate of buying it aggressively here. I would look for some pullback opportunities towards 17, 17 and a half perhaps in that range. But it looks to me like a stock that's headed for the 23, 24 zone, at least initially. If this is leg one and two, we may get a three, three, four and five. So let's look for that. And with 24.6 days to cover, we may very well see that. Blue Cora, well, another one of those swing trades that's acting great ever since we put it out um, a couple weeks ago in the uh, <clears throat> nine range. It's gone up to my first target at the 12, 12 and a half area and may see some more upside. Um, I could see the stock making it all the way to 14, three quarters, 15. There's four and three quarter day to cover on this one too. 4.7, five days to cover. Today it was up 20 cents, just 1.65%, but it continues to push with unbalanced volume, also making new highs. Cree, well, I always liked this company, and, I, and particularly here when it broke out, we put a swing on it. It worked for a week or two, it got hammered, and then it formed a wedge, at which point we warned you it could go lower, and it had a five-wave decline back to test the November lows. Since then, forming what looks like a rounding bottom, the breakaway gap today with a big surge of 266 or 10.6% augurs well, and the close was solid, as uh, although off the highs, it's still up. Like I said, nearly 11%. With 5.4 million share traded, the biggest volume on an update that we can see in the last couple of years, it looks to me like we may get some follow through. And my target is 30 and then 33 on this one. 13.4 days to cover, pretty big position, but short there. See why? Well, with a, with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we complete wave one here, and then this is wave two. Wave three's begun, it's about halfway through it, in my opinion. I think we're going to get up towards 13 and eventually 15, something of that nature, 14 and a half, 15. Uh, but for now, after the pop this morning and the pullback, even though it did close up 3.4%, it was disappointing close. But the volume was so huge, I believe the stock's going higher. 7.8 days to cover. <clears throat> EXEL has been in a fantastic trend ever since the high volume breakout occurred here in late April. And the pullback was a gift as it tested its 50-day. From then, it's run straight up from 4, 15, 20, all the way up to double in the eight and a quarter, eight twenty-eight range. Now the the re, uh, the early pattern or the recent pattern I should say shows that the stock continues to run in a rising channel within a larger rising channel. Should it break out above the eight and a half, eight forty range, I think the stock runs towards ten eleven. There's eight point three days to cover on this one. And here's a look at the long term chart, which shows potentially mid teens. General Electric, a stock I don't normally talk about, but when I looked at the weekly chart today and I saw this huge rising channel and the fact that this hasn't been up in this level since 2008 and today's pop brings it out above that range looks to me like if this is going to be a 39 four dollar stock with a mid-range target of 36. four days to cover for that big cap stock pretty amazing looking at gol which is a uh, foreign airline i believe south american stumbled into a low around two and a half in january february ran up and then platform for three months broke out from the little wedge in here, got very quiet and popped. 
Looks to me like this airline has an extension coming. And my channel target on this one indicates to me we could see this stock as high as 23, 24. For now though, I'm looking for a move to take this towards 18. 3.8 days to cover. HPE Hewlett Packard Enterprises, the spinoff from HPQ, uh, has been strong since the low in January when it was down around 11. It's subsequently nearly doubled. But the reason I'm putting this out today is that you can see the breakout above the double top into new post IPO territory. And at this point, I'm looking for a quick move towards 21 and a half. However, if the channel that we're seeing here becomes more parallel, this may very well make it to the mid 20s up here. And there's five and a quarter days to cover on HPE. HSC, very intriguing. V bottom, right handed extended V, kind of a platform of wedge in here, broke out and then went sideways for a couple months, really testing support twice and forming a nice base. The V bottom or left shoulder head, right shoulder type pattern with a double right shoulder completed with the breakout two days ago. Yesterday was an inside day, and today it popped another dollar or 12.5% on 2.8 million, which is the biggest volume on an update since March. It leads me to believe that we're going to head to that zone in the 11.5 to 12.5 zone. IBM, a stock we don't talk about too often. Taking a look at the long term chart, over a couple of years, this stock came down in five waves one, two, three, four, and a big fifth wave down. Suddenly reversed. Double bottom, reverse, broke breakaway gap here, consolidation there, a nice run up to resistance in that zone, and then a Brexit pullback towards support at 142. Since then, it's gone up 18 points, up almost every day. Now, I would love to see a pullback opportunity near 154, but I believe the stock could be headed to test the gap at 166, followed by 175. And there's six and a half days to cover short on IBM, would you believe? It's a pretty big pos short position for a large cap. JNUG, well, the gold ETF still hanging tough, even though I pulled back down to 271 this morning. It managed to close at 301, 30 points off the low, still down 231, but a terrific recovery. And this still looks like a bull flag that is destined to go towards 500. L looking at Nugget, the same pattern is in play with a flag pattern and support around 146 with resistance up around 169.70. So if we get through 170, we could be headed towards the mid 200s. Kellogg's, a special K. <laughs> this stock has been in a phenomenal uptrend for the last you know, seven years when it was in the mid 30s. It's now in the mid 80s. But that is an all time high. And if you look at the channel that I've drawn in here, it indicates the potentiality of an intermediate move to take the Kellogg up to over 100, maybe 105. On a current basis, I can see this making it up towards 1991. LCI. I put out a swing on this today because, first of all, I like the company. It's had a big move down from the mid 70s or low 70s down to 16 when most biotechs did get hammered. It moved up, consolidated, broke out, consolidated, and today popped another $1.52, convincing me I want to put this on my swing list. Particularly because the close at 28.23 was within seven cents of the high and a new closing high, which indicates to me a target of 32 going forward. And by the way, there is 13.58 days to cover on this one. Well, Nintendo has been having a good time of it of late due to the craze with Pokemon Go. Um, you can see the breakaway gap, the running gap, the huge running gap that took out that entire trading range. And ran it up to a target that hasn't uh, has a resistance level that hasn't been seen since 2011. Now, if it gets through here, we can very well see this in the high 30s. And that's my target if it does make them make the move. But it very well may after it can pop like that consolidate a little bit. Let's take keep close tabs on this one. Very large cap Japanese stock. OMN. I'm not recommending OMN, but when I see a stock that's been trending sideways for I'm talking seven, six, seven years after a big run-up is a long-term pattern. It's a massive inverse head and shoulders, which could support a huge move. Now, the stock's already had a master, monster move from 590 to 10 today in the last couple of weeks alone. 
So even though it can get to 11, 11 and a half, I would have to say I'm looking for a pullback entry off closer to eight and a half, three quarters. Trox, a similar stock after breaking out, has exploded for seven days in a row. It may very well be due for a pullback, but it may also get to the next resistance level at about seven, seven and a quarter before it does that. Secondary targets up around eight and a half. Massive left shoulder, head right shoulder, rounding bottom, whatever you want to call it, could support a big move this five days to cover. Weibo, one of our swing trades, acting very, very well. This chart is a beauty. It's gone from 12 and a half to 34, almost tripling. And it's currently in a consolidation mode, but I don't think it's done yet. I think the stock is headed to the high 30s. And I'm lo looking to see if that does occur. That, that's um, one of our swing trades as well. XNCR. Well, with this base and the massive breakout with a breakaway gap on big volume, uh, followed by two weeks of flagging on low volume, I decided it was time to put out a swing trade on this today. Although I did state that I may be a little early. The stock could drift a little bit lower towards 17. I still think, though, eventually, if the stock does what I think it can, it breaks out of this flag and runs. If it gets through... The 1998 9 zone, I'm looking for stock in the mid-20s. 14 days to cover could fuel the advance on this one. And lastly, Zeltique, which is looking very good as well. Took out a big wedge pattern a couple days ago. Today took out the recent April highs, 31.37. And a nice little inside day. Looks like it's headed higher towards the 38 range where these tops result, you know, or reside. And if we should get through that, we can see that stock make a much bigger move. There's 13.6 days to cover on that one as well. And that's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good evening.